born out of necessity, forged in training, cemented on the battlefield, Air Commandos. Air Force Special Operations Command was established in 1990, but Special Operations Aviation dates back to World War II. General Hap Arnold directed veteran fighter pilots Lieutenant Colonels Philip Cochran and John Allison to build a self-reliant composite fighting force to support British Brigadier General Ord Wingate and his chindits. Now, nothing you've ever done before in your life means a thing. Tonight, you're gonna find out you've got a soul. Good luck. In March 1944, this force was designated the First Air Commando Group. From these missions, the First Air Commando Group earned its motto, any place, any time, anywhere, a variation that is still used today. Early in the Korean War, U.S. Army Intelligence and the CIA needed to deploy intelligence teams and supplies through short and long-range low-level penetration into North and South Korea. Special operations provided these unconventional warfare and counterinsurgency operations and the ability to recover downed airmen during these covert missions. The 4400th Combat Crew Training Squadron deployed a detachment to Bien Hoa, Republic of Vietnam on Operation Farmgate. Their mission was to train the Vietnamese Air Force. Thus, Air Force Special Operations Forces flew some of the first U.S. combat missions in Vietnam. The Air Force introduced the first gunships into combat with the deployment of AC-47s to Vietnam. It is guided by North Vietnam and it is spurred by Communist China. Its goal is to conquer the South, to defeat American power, and to extend the Asiatic dominion of communism. And there are great stakes in the balance. Air Force Special Operations Forces deployed in Vietnam reached a total of 10,000 people, 550 aircraft, and 19 squadrons. One of the most notable missions supported by the U.S. Air Force Special Operations was the Son Tai POW Camp Raid in 1970. This raid altered how the North Vietnamese housed, treated, and interacted with the foreign prisoners. President Jimmy Carter ordered an attempt to end the Iran hostage crisis. The operation encountered many obstacles and was eventually aborted. Late yesterday, I canceled a carefully planned operation which was underway in Iran to position our rescue team for a later withdrawal of American hostages who've been held captive there since November 4th. Equipment failure in the rescue helicopters made it necessary to end the mission. Immediately following the failed Eagle Claw operation, the Pentagon planned a second mission to rescue the hostages in Iran. The concept was to modify a C-130 Hercules with rocket packages to allow for landing and taking off in the confined space of Amjadai Stadium, Iran. The mission was terminated after the Iranian parliament agreed to release the hostages. Grenada, we were told, was a friendly island paradise for tourism. Well, it wasn't. It was a Soviet Cuban colony being readied as a major military bastion to export terror and undermine democracy. We got there just in time. The 23rd Air Force participated in the successful rescue of Americans from the island nation of Grenada. As president, I have no higher obligation and to safeguard the lives of American citizens. And that is why I directed our armed forces to protect the lives of American citizens in Panama and to bring General Noriega to justice in the United States. The 23rd Air Force participated in the reestablishment of democracy in the Republic of Panama during Operation Just Cause. Special Tactics Combat Controllers and Pararescuemen provided important support to combat units during this operation. A first Special Operations Wing Combat Talon Crew 
ferried the captured Panamanian president, Manuel Noriega, to prison in the United States. On the 22nd of May, 1990, General Larry D. Welch, Air Force Chief of Staff, designated 23rd Air Force as Air Force Special Operations Command. Announcement is made that Headquarters 23rd Air Force, Crawford Field, Florida, is redesignated Headquarters of Air Force Special Operations Command. In the life of a nation, we're called upon to define who we are and what we believe. Sometimes these choices are not easy. But today, as president, I ask for your support in a decision I've made to stand up for what's right and condemn what's wrong, all in the cause of peace. AFSOC participated in operations Desert Shield and Desert Storm, the protection of Saudi Arabia and liberation of Kuwait. Special Operations Forces perform direct action missions, infiltration, exfiltration, combat search and rescue. Pavlo crews led the helicopter assault on radars to blind Iraq at the onset of hostilities. AFSOC's special tactics and intelligence personnel supported Operation Restore Hope in Somalia to establish a secure environment for humanitarian operations. AFSOC maintained a constant combat search and rescue alert posture as part of Operation Joint Guard. Our mission is clear, to demonstrate the seriousness of NATO's purpose so that the Serbian leaders understand the imperative of reversing course, to deter an even bloodier offensive against innocent civilians in Kosovo, and if necessary, to seriously damage the Serbian military's capacity to harm the people of Kosovo. In short, if President Milosevic will not make peace, we will limit his ability to make war. Tonight, we are a country awakened to danger and called to defend freedom. Our grief has turned to anger, and anger to resolution. Whether we bring our enemies to justice or bring justice to our enemies, justice will be done. AFSOC deployed forces to Southwest Asia for Operation Enduring Freedom to help confront and remove the Taliban regime in Afghanistan along with the Taliban-supported Al-Qaeda terrorist organization headed by Osama bin Laden, who were responsible for the September 11th attacks on the United States. All the time there's jets, uh, sound of jets flying around, and the Taliban, they don't care about it. But there's one, one plane that, that uh, scares them. There was the sound of this transport plane that scared them. And this is a plane equipped with a lot of um, heavy machine guns, even a cannon. And the thing is, the Taliban, they know that this, this gunship is used when there is some special forces operations. It's used as a support, air support, during these kind of operations. AFSOC again deployed forces to Southwest Asia, this time in support of what would become Operation Iraqi Freedom, which removed Saddam Hussein and liberated the Iraqi people from his ruthless Ba'athist regime. Special operations had brought their unique abilities for humanitarian aid around the world to such places as the Indian Ocean Tsunami, Hurricane Katrina, Haiti, and the Japanese earthquake and tsunami. For the last three decades, if there has been a fight, a contingency, or a humanitarian mission, AFSOC has been in the thick of it. Air Force Special Operations Command.